Welcome to the ACC Network and coverage of women's basketball. We come to you from the Watts Coast Center on the campus of the University of Miami. Virginia Tech riding a nice three-game winning streak, getting, to re getting ready to play the Hurricanes, who just had a very good win against Florida State. Pam Ward here along with former Wake Forest Demon Deacon, LaChina Robinson. And in this matchup today, we have a very interesting matchup of some play that will be inside the paint. Yeah, and that starts with the conversation around the Hokie Center, 6'5", Elizabeth Kitley. She's one of the best post players in the nation, top five in the ACC in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, blocks, and free throw attempts. She has a power game. She can face up. She's gotten better passing out of double coverage, and she's third in the nation in double doubles. She will be a concern tonight for Katie Myers-Canes. And for Miami, boy, Naomi Mbondu has been just on fire since she started in the starting lineup. Yeah, she's starting at the center spot on the Miami side at 6'2", so she's a little undersized, but a matchup problem because she has guard skills. She can stress the floor. She can run the break. She has become a catalyst on defense, and over the last three games, she has shot over 56% from the field. It will really be up to Mbondu to set the tone on the interior defensively against Elizabeth Kitley. And her head coach is Katie Meyer now celebrating her 300th win. Got that in that comfort behind win against Florida State on Sunday, her 300th win in charge of the Hurricanes. And boy, Coach Meyer, uh, we talked to her early in the season and she was really excited about Naomi Mbondu's potential. And uh, Mbondu has been coming up big for her so far. And for Virginia Tech, as they come in, Kenny Brooks' team, he says finally he thinks they're, they've kind of hit their stride. They've won three in a row. And uh, Kenny now in his fifth season trying to get this team back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2006. And right now, Charlie Cream has Virginia Tech as a number 10 seed. And we are underway. Virginia Tech wearing the dark uniforms. We'll take a look at their starting five. Shepard and Kitley combined for 40 points per game. That is the highest scoring duo in the ACC. And they go to Kitley right away, who takes steps, guarded by Mbondu. Elizabeth Kitley was the ACC Freshman of the Year last year, and her numbers have just gotten better this season. And right away, you saw Miami get to Kitley on the backside, so they're going to front her, but also have a smaller defender on the backside. And we take a look at the Miami starting lineup for the second straight game. Carla Arjevitz, who is the uh, transfer from Wyoming, starting in place of Taylor Mason, and that worked out well with Mason coming off the bench against Florida State. Yeah, Miami had a stretch where they were in 10 days of practice, and Katie Meyer said it was tough. You know, they competed and out of that made some changes to the starting lineup, but it seemed to work out well for Taylor Mason with that career high 15 off of the bench. And you know what goes when things are going well. Coaches uh, usually don't like to change things around. Kitley has one rim out on the shot. India Banks number four running the point for Miami this season. And there Good is Arievitz. defense. Good transition defense there by Virginia Tech, and that will be one of the keys to this game as Harden scores a bucket on the interior. Virginia Tech will need to get back and guard Miami's dribble drive without fouling. Miami's a team that likes to use their defense, wants to push pace, and will definitely try to take this Virginia Tech team off of the bounce. Asia Shepard sticks a three, but not in the good way. And this is something else to watch tonight. Virginia Tech is the best three-point shooting team in the ACC. They're hitting 10 per game on average, and they're taking on a Miami defense that has been pretty good at defending the three. So we'll take a look at that as the evening wears on. Yeah, it'll be interesting, Pam, because in my opinion, Miami's best defense has been their zone. But do you want to play zone against a Virginia Tech team that can stretch the floor from three in so many positions. Wow, there's the best three-point shooter, one of the best three-point shooters for Miami, Kelsey Marshall, taking it in off the bounce. And Miami is gonna pick up and look to pressure Virginia Tech here. I think Miami has to make this game ugly with their defense. They've gotta force some turnovers, get going back the other way, and also try to speed up Virginia Tech. They are very intentional 
in their half-court offense and getting the ball to Kitley, and that's a good high post look there from Baines. Yeah, that's Azana Baines, who is the Duke transfer. Her first game for Florida State was on New Year's Eve, or for Florida State, for Miami, pardon me. That was or for uh, Virginia Tech, as Miami comes back and scores on the jumper by Banks. Banks had a favorable matchup, and that's what I expect Katie Meyer to do, to kind of pick on the foot speed of, of Virginia Tech at different positions. And it's hard to keep up with Banks off the bounce. She gets isolation with King, and that's an easy bucket going to the left, her strong side for India. Banks starting now her 10th straight game, and Kitley gets the first or her first bucket of the game. Last three games, she has been on fire during this uh, winning streak, averaging over 21 points per game for the Hokies. Kitley, who is averaging a double-double, gets another rebound. And there you see the evidence that China talked about of Miami's pressure defense. Part Kayla King's three was well off the mark. And Arjavitz, who usually wears number 25, wearing number 54 for Miami tonight. Virginia Tech is in a man-to-man -man defense, doing some switching, some hedging there by Kitley. This is going to be the challenge for Kitley, is guarding a smaller Mbondu without getting in foul trouble and also coming out to guard the three-point line. Boy, and that worked that time, didn't it, as uh, Kitley was able to get a hand on Mbondu's shot. Kitley's about three inches taller than Mbondu, who came over from a very good junior college program. Shot clock down to three. Desperation shot was off the mark. Virginia Tech has won the last two games in this series. Shepard, you can't keep her off the score sheet for long. Well, and that's what Katie Meyer told us coming into this game. Asia Shepard is one of the best guards in the country. And, my, and Katie Meyer said, you know, we could spend a ton of time planning for Shepard and talking about how we're going to guard ball screens and get up in her and get off of her and chase her. Doesn't matter. She can get to that shot whenever she wants. Yeah, she said, sometimes I don't even know why we bother game planning for Asia Shepard because she always seems to bust that open. Georgia Amor, the freshman from Australia, misses from the outside. And then Shepard has that tick off the rim. One thing that Virginia Tech did early that I really liked was they took Kitley off of the post, so it made it hard for Miami to bring an extra defender. But here are the numbers for Asia Shepard. 67 three-point made field goals this season, second in all of college women's basketball, four three-pointers per game, fourth in Division I. She does not get the credit as being one of the best shooting guards in the nation, but her name should definitely be talked about more and she should be on many of these watch lists, in my opinion. And I understand that Virginia Tech got off to a little bit of a, a slow start in conference. But since the win over NC State, um, they've won three in a row. And Charlie Cream has them in the tournament. That's right. They went through a stretch where they lost seven of eight games, and many of them close. And they almost beat NC State. Remember, they only lost by a couple the first time they played them on the road before they came back to get them on the upset. And Destiny Harden knocks down the three-point shot. Harden went through a little bit of a tough stretch for Miami, but Coach Meyer says she is finally starting to look like her old self again, which is good news for the, for the Canes. Yeah, you and I had Miami at hit, which was a very interesting game, a tale of two halves. But... Uh, Destiny Harden, I can remember, just really struggling in that game in particular and around that time. And she looks like a very different player confidence-wise to start this one. Another three attempt is off the mark. And boy, confidence plays so much of a part for, for all of these players. Miami starting a stretch of four games in eight days. Now here's Sydney Roby who is in. Roby, another big body at 6'3 that they can throw at Kitley because they really don't they really don't, is it safe to say, have a true five on this team? Yes, they really do not have a true five on this team. And that's what's been difficult for Miami, especially after losing Beatrice Mom Premier. Three goes in there for the Hokies as Miami's in their man-to-man. -man. That was Amor with that shot. But you're absolutely right. It makes a 
big difference when you don't have a really true, powerful, I would say experienced center mm. in the lineup. And Katie Myers also just had some of her bigs not perform up to par this year. Harden leaning in, and she draws the foul. Tech up 10-9 as we take our first time out in Florida. What do you see? He wears his celebrity naturally. His gift for the game comes easy. His demeanor reveals nothing of the desire that burns. One pick, Trevor Lawrence will conduct his pro day Friday morning. With all eyes on him, what do you see? He wears his celebrity naturally. His gift for the game comes easy. His demeanor reveals nothing of the desire that burns within. Projected number one pick Trevor Lawrence will conduct his pro day Friday morning. Reese Davis will be joined by E.J. Manuel and Tim Hasselback with Todd McShay live at Clemson for full breakdowns and analysis from 10 to 11 a.m. on the ACC Network and ESPN2. Uh, Trevor Lawrence may be about to be a Jacksonville Jaguar. Urban Meyer, the new head coach down there. So check that out tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson joining you. 78 degrees outside right now in Coral Gables, Florida. Well, Pam, I thought that once the Super Bowl was over, football was over. No, um, it's never you know, over. This is the kind of year where I like <laughs> to dive into basketball. So I will be keeping a side eye on Trevor, but I'm all about the round orange ball right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, football's never over, man, especially for the, the crazy people down around that. Crazy in a good way down the, in that part of the country. So it'll be interesting to see how Trevor pans out. Virginia Tech leading Miami here 10 to 9. Kitley inside guarded by Roby. Good job by Sidney Roby that time. And you know what Roby brings as a defender against Kitley? She brings physicality. So when Bondu brings quickness, can get around, but look at the physical play of Roby. Kept the body on Kitley legally. That entire play just made her presence felt. That's great defense by 44 and White. Roby, a sophomore out of Milwaukee. Shot clock is winding down. 
Amor has to jack one up and oh, it went boy. in. How about that? You gotta love Georgia Amor. A freshman. Some people think she's a sophomore, but she's actually a freshman on the court. Spent some time last year with this Virginia Tech team, but what a season she's had. Still learning and growing. You could see Asia Shepard talking to her in the timeout, teaching. Amor has been hitting on the average 40% of her threes. Has a couple of them today, and this one was desperation. <laughs> really nowhere to go, and Houston did a nice job switching out on her. But quick release from Amor, bottom. And we're going to see more of Jameer Houston probably than uh, Miami's used to uh, playing, in part because Mulena City Baba is, has not been medically cleared, so City Baba will not play tonight. And she is their best perimeter defender, so we will see how that affects the Hurricanes with no MJ, as they call her, Sidi Baba. It will definitely be a different rotation for Miami. Everyone will have to do more. Taylor Mason coming off of the bench. We may see more of Goni coming off of the bench than we did last game. Score there by Kitley. Second see bucket. Houston in the game now. Yep, Jameer Houston is number 15 in white, trimmed with pink. It is the uh, the pink game uh, honoring Kay Yao, the legendary Kay Yao, uh, the University of Miami, making this their pink game this evening. And I like Long. the change to zone by Virginia Tech. I was going to say force Miami to hit the three, but a player that you have to make sure you find if you're going to play a zone defense is Kelsey Marshall, and that one was from deep. And Kelsey Marshall... Hitting that three is now second in Miami history and made threes behind only Laquana Williams, who is a Las Vegas ace, right? Williams with the big move today, she the is. WNBA, today. man. <laughs> Whoa, a lot of stuff going on in the W. Landed with Bill Lambeer. He loves a, a big, strong guard, and that's what Laquana Williams brings. And he also lost Kayla McBride as a shooter, so you add their microwave <laughs> yes. as he earned that name coming off of the bench, catching fire with almost every team she played on. Yeah, she scored, what, 51 off the bench, uh, Williams did, which stood as a WNBA record for a while, and uh, the former Hurricane now going to Vegas. Amor. And a long outside shot, and that is nailed by DeAsia Gregg, boy, what a great story DeAsia Gregg is. Six foot two junior who did not play in eight games because of a coaching decision this year and now has become a valuable part of this team. Oh yeah, and at a very good time as Asia Jones made a decision to step away from the program. She had been consistently in the starting lineup, so that moved things around a little bit for Kenny Brooks. Azana Baines moved to the four spot, which has been good for her. And then Greg's been able to come in and contribute at that power forward position. And, and Kenny Brooks said, you know, it's actually freed up both Greg and Baines. So they're not looking behind them, looking over their shoulder. There's so much depth at that position. Now both of them can kind of settle into a rhythm on the court. Ball kept in possession of Miami. Asia Shepard was whistled for her first foul on that last stoppage. That's a foul underneath, and, and Bondu's going to get a chance to go to the free throw line for Miami. Houston catches it, squares up on the drive, and a beautiful pass. No one drops down. Shepard should have been there on that backside to pick up, but she was not. Foul. Second on Greg already, and here's Mbondu at the line. And boy, she has really made a splash and is might be playing the best basketball of anybody on this Miami team right now. Yeah, I mean, we had a good conversation with Katie Meyer, and she talked about the pedigree that Mbondu came from in junior college. I mean, she was a champion at that level, probably would have won another one had she stayed another year, but it was never really her team. You know, there were other players around her that were better. Or, or that we're just given that role. And now it seems like Mbondi's been empowered, even at that five spot. Beautiful cut and score there by Shepard at the rim. 
Asia Shepard now with five as Virginia Tech has taken a six point lead. Leah Banks dribbling into trouble. Gets it out to Arjevic. Found a little bit of space, but left it well short. Arjevic, another interesting story. Her first year at Miami, played a couple of years at Wyoming, is from Croatia, and uh, went through some uh, personal issues, came to Miami, and then her mother unexpectedly passed away, had to go back there for a while, uh, take care of her little brother, and, and get the, the family situation squared away, and has been working her way to more and more minutes as the season has progressed. You have to smile to see her in the starting lineup because how far she has come from possibly not playing at all this season to, to being a starter and being a reliable part of this team. Yeah, because at first she wasn't expected to until the blanket waiver was granted by the NCAA in December. In and out, it's tipped out and will be Miami basketball. There is uh, Arjevic. And when she was over in Croatia in November, was actually able to play in the Eurobasket qualifiers for the Croatian national team. Bondu passing it up, wants it right back. Now working against Kitley, that's off the mark by Houston. And now no, Virginia. Like I like Miami's attempt to get the ball inside against the zone, but they are one of their last seven, and a lot of that has been since Virginia Tech has gone to that zone. They've got to be willing to get some ball reversal, get to short corner, get a little bit more movement before they try to go inside. Yeah, that, the only shot they hit, in fact, was that three by Marshall right when they switched to the zone. Time winding down. Asia Shepard, a little bit wide left, and Bondu boards it. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Virginia Tech leading by six. school.
Our doubleheader on the ACC Network continues next with Syracuse getting ready to take on at Florida State right here on the ACC Network in the ESPN app. Tiana Angakahia and the Orange taking on Florida State. And how about Camila Cardoza now? Three straight ACC Freshman of the Week honors. Yeah, she has really stepped up her game from Quentin Hillsman. I don't know that coming into the season, looking at the backcourt that was returning for Syracuse, especially with Kira Lewis leading the team in scoring last year, if we thought the freshman was going to be the player as Kitley gets an easy bucket coming out of the timeout. But it's been her shot blocking as well, Pam. Pardoso is very tough to score over, and so she saved Syracuse's defense and has had really a brilliant season. ACC Freshman of the Year is going to be, ooh, a tough race. And so far, the last three weeks, as we said, she's really been racking up the numbers. This is the biggest lead of the game for Virginia Tech now at eight. Miami's offense has been stuck for a while. Kitley gets another rebound off the hard miss. Miami has missed eight of its last nine shots. You see their field goal percentage is an anemic 29%, but they got off to a horrible start against Florida State in their last game and came back to win that. Marshall breaks the drought. Yeah, Miami's got to pick up the pace. This is right here is where they need to be making Virginia Tech uncomfortable, getting them out of the flow on their offense, making them feel pressure. They've let them settle in a little bit over the latter part of the first quarter into this second quarter. Can't let Kitley just post up in the paint. Yeah, that was fortunate for Miami that Kitley just had a little bit too much on that shot. How about as Marshall misses the three, and Bondu has not taken a shot from the floor, did not take one field goal attempt in the first half, and then Shepard beats everybody. Transition defense for the Canes. We thought we would be talking about that for Virginia Tech, but there's been some easy glides to the basket for Shepard. I know you don't want to give her the three, but you can't just give her a lane to the rim either. Yeah, because she certainly is capable in that respect. And now the ball goes right back over to the Hokies. That is the first turnover of the game for Miami, doing a good job at least in that department. Turnover margin is going to be the more important stat for Miami at the end of this night. And Virginia Tech has only given it up once as well. So a clean game so far as Miami's shooting has not been up to par. And Bondu got it picked by Kayla King. Really nice defense by King. Good awareness. Came in, swiped it, and saved the possession. So Bondu still has not taken a shot from the floor. Only has two free throws to show for her offensive effort tonight. Has to guard Kitley now on this end. And that one oh. finds the bottom of the net. Azana Baines knocking it down. And the Canes are now down by 11 and take a timeout. Virginia Tech has bought their confidence to Coral Gables on a three-game winning streak. Offense looking pretty. is about as good as it gets.
is about as good as it gets. Can you believe championship week is about, what, three weeks away? Holy smokes, oh, Virginia Tech goodness. playing well. Heading into uh, championship week, they've won their last three games. Numbers are up. Kitley and Shepard have been terrific, especially Kitley. Her scoring is well up. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that has found their stride. We were talking to Kenny Brooks about what he feels like the biggest difference has been. Obviously, beating NC State gives your team a ton of confidence, but he, you know, just mentioned how young they are. They have three sophomores, a freshman, and a senior in their starting lineup and said that everyone's just starting to understand their roles. You know, they're getting better as a team on the defensive end, offensive execution, especially with some of the changes to their lineup as of recent, I think that has brought them more fluidity. And uh, they're just in a good rhythm. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Brooks, uh, and in his fifth year, he said everybody's starting to understand their roles. And he said, you know, they have a few games left, just three actually after today that are scheduled because their next game coming up against Boston College has been called off because Boston College is in COVID protocol. Marshall hits the shot, and that breaks a scoring drought of over two minutes for Miami. We've seen a lot of maturity from Kelsey Marshall. She did not hit a three in that win over Florida State, but still scored in double figures. And when you're known for your shooting, this kid effortlessly gets to the rim. Nobody there. Um, you know, when that's your reputation as a three-point shooter, sometimes when you're not hitting them, you can get a little cranky. And Katie Meyer <laughs> said that is often the case with Kelsey Marshall, but just shows her patience and maturity. And Kitley with the rejection, which makes Harden kick it back out. Yeah, in fact, Katie said that, she, that sometimes when Marshall doesn't hit a three, she, she said she used to pout. I guess her pouting days are over. Boy, lucky shot by Banks, because it was definitely a fourth shot. Miami will pick up with some pressure now that they've hit a bucket. See if they can be disruptive on this end of the floor. India Banks not shooting at a high percentage from three, but knocked that one down to get to within eight. And then Kitley gets a little bump from behind by Roby, who is back in to give Mbondu a break. That is the second on Sydney. Virginia Tech has uh, yet to shoot a free throw in this game. Not a lot of fouls. To the free throw line is an important part of, of the Miami end of things. They've got to find a way to, again, I think it starts with the pace. Miami gets there on average over 19 times a game. Kitley disrupted by Harden. Shot clock at three now. Amor couldn't do it again. Had another had a buzzer beater back in the first quarter when she hit a three. Great defense there by Miami. Disruptive. Got to the ball on Kitley. That's how you have to play against this Hokies team. Because they're very talented and very balanced on offense. And Marshall with the miss that time. Kitley now has five rebounds on the evening and averaging a double-double. And then now. She's got half of the double-double with 10 points. And it's oh, a 10-point advantage. Kelsey Marshall just bumped into her own teammate. Took Banks out. Looking at two of the seniors in the backcourt for Katie Meyer. Another one coming off of the bench there for Taylor Mason. So Miami did not turn the ball over at all in the first quarter. They have four of them already here in the second quarter, including that one on the friendly fire collision. <laughs> Kayla King, her turn to knock one down from the outside. Five different Hokies have hit at least one three tonight. Now whistle away from the action. Luis Gonzalez, Kevin Dillard, and Maggie Tiemann, our officials this evening. 
Right here, Miami trying to apply some pressure, but doesn't recover to the three-point line, and King gets it to go. Elizabeth Kitley was called for the foul, her first. Naomi Mbondu just took her first shot of the night. Unbelievable. And then another three finds the bottom of the net. Shepard capping off an 8-0 run with that three. And it's slipping away from Miami. And shooting a bunch of threes is not Miami's game. No. I mean, that's not their offense. They're quick shooting the basketball right now. They're playing the way that Virginia Tech plays, taking their identity, and that's not what they do well. Boy, that's a nice play by Amor to get it into Kitley, and Virginia Tech will have its first opportunity at the line, as Liz says thanks a lot, Georgia, for that pass. So you have a transition opportunity here on the handoff. You can never leave Asia Shepard alone. You have to stay between her and the bucket so that you can contest her from long range. She wanted a foul there as well. But you got to get there. Asia already with a couple of threes. Sends Kitley to the line where she is a 74% free throw shooter. Saturday on the hardwood, our 2 p.m. Eastern matchup. It's men's basketball as BC squares off against Syracuse up at the Dome right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. That is coming up. Syracuse women coming up after us this evening against Florida State on the ACC Network. Kitley so smooth. Her, her father was a basketball player at a, a university in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, I hear. Oh, you like the Deeks? <laughs> yeah, I believe he was a, a double D, a Demon Deacon. What, what about Wake Forest picking up a huge win Ooh. at Georgia Tech? Right now, Charlie Cream has the Deeks in the field, and I'm sure that Georgia Tech win did a lot on the road for Jen Hoover's club. Oh, that's a good recovery to get the basket by Hart. But it wasn't easy. I mean, nothing Miami's been able to get has been easy since Virginia Tech went to the zone. Yeah, pardon me, that bucket was by Banks, not Harden, and that breaks a 10-0 hokey run. King Look right back into Kitley. Just posting up so hard for position. I mean, she is so skilled and very, very high basketball IQ. She knows where to post, how to post, She's starting to have a better understanding of how to read the defense before the ball gets inside. I mean, I just can't believe she's a sophomore, Pam. We get to watch this for at least a couple more years. I mean, off one leg with the dirt kit to go along with it. And yes, she has a size advantage, but it doesn't mean she has to hit these shots and she's hitting them and she's using that face-up game very well. And very smooth out there. That's a bad miss by Green, but Virginia Tech had it momentarily, but then taken, taken away, excuse me, by Banks. And now India Banks, too strong. And another rebound for Kitley. Okay, Meyer will be the first to tell you her team has not been a quick out of the gates team. You know, they were down two at half to Florida State. They were down early against Pitt. You remember you and I had that game and fought their way back. So they've been down in some games and found a way even came back to make it a close one against Louisville. Yeah, that pit game, they were down 23 points in the first quarter and came back to win. Shepard with a step back three that Banks is able to rebound. And Shepard's so dangerous out there. And now the drive, the challenge of Kitley and Harden or excuse me, Mason got it rejected. And you saw some frustration there by Mbondu. You see her hand go up at the top of the screen and then it went down. But Kitley <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Now Liz Kitley averaging just under two blocks per game, as you see, among the leaders in the ACC. And contact and count it. And Destiny Harden. Anytime Miami's got isolation around the bucket with anyone 
with the exception of Liz Kitley, they've been very successful because that's where they can use their physicality. You know, their guards are very physical. Their forwards are physical. Harden with a beautiful cut there. King late. Fowler. So I think it's just a matter of getting behind that zone, not forcing shots from the side or the top of it. Again, a baseline runner I think would be good for Miami. A short corner. We'll see what adjustments Katie Meyer makes in the second half, but they also got to tighten up on defense. They've given up too many open three-pointers. And Virginia Tech, 7 of 18 from three. So far in this game. And then Shepard quickly gets off the baseline. Here's Baines. Good defense taken away by Hart. And then a little bit too ambitious trying to get it up court to Arjavitz. And that's got to be frustrating. You see Harden a little bit upset with herself, making a steal, but then throwing the ball away on the other end. Kitley. A little bit off the mark, and the ball goes over to Miami. This is an interesting lineup, a bigger lineup, where Kenny Brooks can actually have both Greg and Baines in the game at the same time. Gives him a lot of length at the three spot. And that's in addition to Kitley. That's a big front line. Underneath and finally, Mbondu hits her first field goal of the evening on only her second shot. And the other one was a three. So Miami up 41 to 27 at the half. Shepard with 10, Kitley with 14 to lead the way for Tech as we send you to Kelsey. How did we get Mbondi some shot? Welcome back, Virginia Tech up at the half in part because of great three-point shooting, one of their strengths. Yeah, they have found a way to get the threes against Miami defense. That time stepping behind the screen by Shepard. This was a little bit of a prayer by Amor, but that's when you knew things would go well for the Hokies. On the switch, they are ready to pull the trigger with a bigger defender coming out. Over helping here leads to an open three. Baines has got some size, so she shoots over Banks. It just, however they wanted it, the Hokies were getting looks from long range on the backside of Miami's full court pressure. I mean, just a, a number of different ways. But at the end of the day, Miami has taken 12 three-pointers, shot 25% from long range, and Virginia Tech has taken 19 for 37%. So. Miami's got to get some shots inside of Virginia Tech's defense. They've got to be patient, be willing to get maybe a shot clock violation, but they've got to find a way to get a piece of the paint and also create some offense from their defense. And right away you saw they tried to get it into uh, Naomi Mbondu, who has been their leading scorer over the last four games. Naomi only had four points in the first half, only took two shots from the floor for the, for the Hurricanes. And you talked about them uh, shooting too many threes. 
their offense. How about no bench points, no fast break points, and no points off turnovers for the Hurricanes, and especially points off turnovers are huge for them, and they got nada. Yeah, that's the recipe for success for them. The turnovers, guarding the three, getting to the free throw line. Those were some of our keys to the game. They only got to the free throw line five times. But that's why you love the basketball has two halves. Let's see how the Canes attack the Hokies in this third quarter. That didn't turn out well for Mbondu. Yeah, Mbondu might want to go to plan B. That's the third block for Liz Kitley, who is working on another double-double off the uh, inbounds. Banks may be a little bit too far under the hoop. King could not chase it down. Elizabeth Kitley, 14 points and seven rebounds so far. Kitley and Shepard have combined for 24 on the season. They combined for 40 points per game, the top scoring duo in the ACC. I mean, they just give balance. You know, they're two weapons that are, are a nightmare for your opponent. If you can score consistently around the bucket, defenses have to respect it. And when they do, you can hit long range shots at a, at a high percentage. So you have to almost pick your poison. It's a lot of ground to cover. And it's been a challenge tonight for Miami. Hurricanes take another three, but that time it worked out. The threes always work out when they're coming from Kelsey Marshall. It's who's taking the shots and she isn't shooting it at a high percentage tonight. But because you know that she can hit those, you're okay with her looking from long range. You've got two here on Kitley. Good defense by Miami. And it forces the turnover, but then they give it right back. At least a couple of times we've seen them do it, get a turnover and then throw it right away. Kitley, that's nice work inside. Oh, my goodness. Boy, two feet. She had low position. That was the key to that move because she had a smaller defender on her in Harden that was trying to get around, but she got so low on that post position and used the strength in her legs. And Kitley on the other end has caused trouble for Mbondu. There's another turnover as Banks took some steps. It's nine turnovers now, and we heard uh, them talking in the studio, particularly Kelly Gramlich, about how ridiculous it is that Elizabeth Kitley's name is not on a lot of these national watch lists. Yeah, she and a Asia Shepard, but I can't name. I mean, I'll just say that I don't think there are nine better or ten better centers in the country than Elizabeth Kitley. I mean, there's a there's a top 10 centers list and she's not on it. And I, I can't say after looking at that list that there are 10 better than her. No. And if you take a look at that list, the Lisa Leslie list, you, you kind of shake your head at it. Kitley has just been tremendous. And uh, again, third in the nation and uh, double doubles on the season. And, and perhaps Virginia Tech's rocky start to the ACC season had something to do with it, but that shouldn't take away from the individual brilliance that is Elizabeth Kitley. Well, and the Hokies have gotten the national attention. They beat NC State. They almost beat yeah. them twice. They have found their way. You gotta allow teams to kind of hit their stride. They struggled a little bit when Baines was inserted into the lineup, trying to get a rhythm with her. Amor had some injuries. You know, we talked about them recently losing Jones, which is another change, which is, um, thank goodness for them, not affected them negatively. So there's just been a number of things that have happened. And you credit, obviously, the other ACC teams. But in fourth quarter, Virginia Tech, I mean, there were a lot more wins they should have had on their record if it was not for the fourth quarter stretches where they would just allow teams to get back into the game. And they've learned how to start winning games earlier. Sidney Roby has just picked up her third personal foul for Miami. You mentioned Asia Jones. She has stepped away from the team. That goes in. Sydney Harden throwing one up that finds the bottom of the, of the net. So Asia Jones, a transfer from USC. The door is open perhaps for her to come back this season, says head coach Kenny Brooks, but they don't have her. And also Taylor Guyman, who tore her ACL last game was on New Year's Eve. Not a big score, but gave them 15 minutes off the bench and contributed in other ways. Miami turning it over again. Yeah, they had a a couple of moves on the roster, a transfer. 
So they're shorthanded, Virginia Tech is actually, from what their rotation was with three players essentially over the last few weeks that have rotated out. And you mentioned just trying to get Azana Baines acclimated into uh, the lineup. Her first game was against Florida State on New Year's Eve, but boy, they have won three in a row and have looked good so far in this game against the Hurricanes. Well, and Miami's done a better job of, of hitting shots in the offense. Not sure I would say they were in their flow, but their turnovers are killing them. They're getting the ball back, they're getting stops, but they've given it right back to Virginia Tech. Kitley working on Roby, who has three fouls. Liz just does the fadeaway that time. What are you going to do about Liz Kitley? Can you imagine her development over the next two years oh. as a sophomore? She works for position on every possession. Never takes one off. The quick spin doesn't allow the defense to react. You see her check the D. She's done a better job of that. Might have gotten fouled at 6'5". Her footwork, mm. her mobility, and her touch is a lethal combination. Yeah, you're right. She's got terrific hands and just a great feel around the basket. Shepard gets the screen from Kitley. And then inside a foul. If that's on Roby, that's four. Miami went to zone for a couple possessions, just trying to mix it up. I said earlier in the show, I feel like zone is their best defense, but obviously you can't really play a ton of zone against a three-point shooting team in Virginia Tech that likes to spread the floor. That's the fourth That's foul on Roby. Greg now at the line. And we remind you that uh, tomorrow night at 10 Eastern, it's bald men not on campus. Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, and Seth Greenberg preview the ACC slate of weekend games and the latest news from all around the great basketball conference that is the ACC. No lane violation here against Tech. Greg with uh, three points on the evening. Inside, boy, that's tough. Working on Kitley for Jameer Houston. Anytime you've got to take on Kitley one-on-one, -on -one, I think you've got to try to get her to move around, possibly take her a little bit outside the paint, maybe try to drive on her, but going right at her on first side, it's going to be tough. She's done a nice job of limiting shots around the rim tonight. Score actually is 46-33, Virginia Tech up by 13 right now. We see... A young Agoni, number 14 in white, has checked in. Only played a couple of minutes in the first half. Another 6-2 player who perhaps can help on Kitley, but they hit from the outside again. Amor this time. 5-5. Five, five. Amor got that shot off. <laughs> she has a knock, a neck, excuse me, for getting the three to go. And then Arjevitz throws up a three on the other side. Miami is the worst three-point shooting team percentage-wise in the ACC, and they've thrown up a lot of them tonight, 16 in all. And that's a step. Yep, Greg shuffled a little bit. Timeout, 6-0 Tech run has given them this 17-point lead.
Welcome back to Miami. February is a Black History Month, and Kim Sands is a name that, that uh, lies prominently in Miami women's basketball history. Yeah, she was their first scholarship athlete, and from what we understand, the first African-American woman to play on the basketball team, but she actually earned her scholarship in tennis, and actually we used to run back and forth from the tennis facility to basketball was an outstanding athlete would later go on to serve as the tennis coach at um had much success there but wanted to definitely take some time during black history month to acknowledge some of the lesser known stories of african-american men and women in our acc schools destiny hart Cleaning up with uh, with that basket after another miss from the outside. Yeah, and Kim Sands, uh, you mentioned, uh, was the tennis team coach at the University of Miami, Miami from 1990 to 1998. And actually played on the uh, the tennis tour, and I believe got as high as what number 42 in the world rankings. Played in uh, Grand Slam events, so uh, quite quite the tennis player, but also made her mark on this uh, basketball team back in the 1970s. Miami, though, trailing by 15 in this game. They finally have some fast break points at three, just two points off turnovers. And here's Miami going again back to their zone just to try to change things up, be a little bit disruptive. Shot clock dying. Kitley just able to reach over and the follow did not go in for Liz Kitley. But that's your concern against that zone. Got to be able to rebound out of it. And what a pass by Marshall to Banks. India Banks now, now with pressure. nine. After the made basket, Miami can put on the pressure that oftentimes leads to their points. Shepard. A little bit too strong, rebound. And now Banks out in the open, doesn't have numbers, but India's gonna literally charge. Amor draws another one. Yeah, Banks is a little out of control, wanted to go to her strong side, her left side. I feel like she would have taken it and just allowed the officials to make a decision because Amor wasn't squared in front of her. I think she could have gone right to the rim, but she hesitated with the concern of picking up a charge, and that's where she actually picked up the charge. Well, Banks, who's the captain of this team, picks up her first personal foul. Having to play the point this year, Mykia Gray, their usual point guard, hurt her knee in the offseason, and Miami certainly has, has missed her. It's caused other players to have to move around. As you see, Katie Meyer, those, boy, they're wearing those bright pink shirts today. Katie's uh, doing a little bit of barking there on the uh, end line right now, the head coach for Miami. You gotta love that energy. Look at Katie Meyer, <laughs> top left hand, left corner. Oh, she got over the court. And she's getting at least a warning. And she was well out onto the court. 300 wins at Miami, that's what it does to you. You know? Yeah, she was not given a technical foul, but that was definitely a warning. It looked like uh, Kevin Diller definitely gestured over to her. You know, Katie's giving Kevin a little bit of little bit of jaw over there. Well, because at, at 300 wins, you know a little bit of what you can get away with, you know, <laughs> without actually picking up the technical foul. I mean, she knows how to walk that tightrope. Katie Meyer was such a terrific player at Duke. And comes up with some of the best sayings. We have an opportunity to talk to coaches. And she said that she was unleaded fuel. And the rest of the team might be diesel, but it still works. I'm not sure I get that, but OK. Well, I think what I got from that is Katie thinks she's a little more low key than she actually is. Unleaded does not sound like no. Katie to me. No, I would put her more in the diesel category. <laughs> Kelsey Marshall getting the three to go. We feel some energy from the Canes here, getting it from their coach in the last few minutes. 
It's a 7-0 Miami run. It's been three minutes since the Hokies have scored. But then Miami comes up and Katie has to walk away after the foul. <laughs> after the warning, she's got to find another way to release that energy. Yeah, she needs to go that way, away from the court, correct, not, not <laughs> onto the floor. So Arjevic just picked up her second foul and Miami over the limit. So free throws from Amor. And as you mentioned, she did come to campus last year, did not play, but at least was enrolled and got herself acclimated. But one of the, another one of those Australians that just seemed to be steady and ice, you know, there's ice water in their veins. She just, just seems like a, a gonna be a really good basketball player as a freshman. Yeah, she's got some national team experience from back in Australia. And you know what that can do for your confidence. Harden with the rise and fire over Kitley. Boy, Destiny Harden really, in the last few games, starting to come back. She's got 14 points. Had 12 rebounds and seven points in that big come from behind win against Florida State on Sunday. This zone, I think, is where Miami gets their energy. They've been lucky that Virginia Tech has missed the three. They're going to hit that one, but they seem to have gotten some energy from making that switch to the zone, more active, more comfortable in that, and just more energetic overall. And you saw who hit that three, right? Amor, of course. The Aussie knocking it down. Amor had five threes in their a win at Notre Dame earlier when she had a career-high 23 points. But there you see the numbers for her also chipping in five assists, four of five from beyond the arc. Inside a minute to go in the third and another turnover. India Banks, and that is your classic Miami basketball. Fast break points. They need more of them. And off the turnover, and again, that gives them the opportunity to set up their press. Kenny Brooks says, let's talk about it. As Miami on a bit of a surge here, they've made three straight shots, now down 11.
Welcome back to Coral Gables, where Miami has started to put together a run, and it started with their defense to the offense. We saw a transition bucket there. Of course, Kelsey Marshall hitting a three helps as Miami has struggled with their efficiency for long range, but they've hit a couple. How about the turnaround jump shot by Harden over Kitley, but they've been able to set up their pressure. You just feel an energy with this Canes team. And this game is far from over with as we hit the last 30 seconds of the third quarter. And Harden with a double-double, 14 points, 10 boards. Her third double-double of the year. Good rebound by Harden, make it 11 boards for her. And let's see if Miami can end this quarter on a high note. And Bandu does it from the outside. So Naomi with the bucket, cuts it to single digits. There's Amor, they're running out of time. But Amor's gonna put it up. Hit oh boy. What a shot, what a play. Just when you think the Canes had some life, Georgia Amor breaks your heart. Buckets. Thank you very much, Kelsey. Uh, yep, Georgia Tech and Louisville. And my uh, partner here, LaChina Robinson, thought Tech might give Louisville a game tonight. Yeah, I mean, you got to imagine that Georgia Tech's a little disappointed after losing at home to Wake Forest. I mean, Wake's a great team, but Georgia Tech had won seven in a row. And definitely wanting to get back on track. It's always when you need to get back on track, you've got to face the number one team in the yes. conference. It always seems to be that way. That was, remember, we had the Clemson at Louisville game, and she's like, you know, Amanda Butler's like, we need to get right, and we're going to Louisville. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Kitley got bumped underneath Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. Miami outscoring uh, Virginia Tech just by two in that third quarter. Georgia Amor hitting a three right as time expired. She has 17. Kitley has 18 to lead the way for Tech. And Liz is back at the free throw line. So Where what did... What did Miami do well in that third quarter that they need to continue? Going zone does make them vulnerable from three, but it protects them from Kitley. I thought that change in defense really was, was great for them. I also felt like players took better shots um, on the offensive end. And yes, they did hit a couple threes as well, but there was a concerted effort to try to get a deeper shot clock look once they get this Virginia Tech defense to move around a little bit. Um, I thought they did a better job of rebounding. So we'll see if they can take some of that here into the fourth quarter. Marshall misses from three that time. Rebound gathered by Baines for Virginia Tech, who are trying to win their fourth straight game. And that would bring them to six and seven in the conference. Clemson lost to NC State earlier tonight. So right now, Tech and Miami are a half game ahead of Clemson in the standings. Lake Forest also coming into play at five and seven tonight. Oh, oh that's boy. the, that's like, you don't want to do that. Marshall, Marshall's a three-point shooter. She should know not to foul a three-point shooter, but she did that, and that's three on Kelsey. Got her right on the arm. Asia Shepard did not score, pardon me, in the third quarter as she heads to the line. But looking at statistics, coming out of the half versus where they are now, Miami is now out-rebounding Virginia Tech. They have 15 second-chance points to Tech's five. Their fast break points now are at seven, where they were at zero at halftime. Um, and so those are a couple of things just, just to keep our eye on, but it just feels very different. Um, it, with the exception of the damage that the Hokies have continued to do from the three-point line. Yeah, that's that's the X factor for Virginia Tech, a team that relies heavily on the three. Shepard delivering at the free throw line. Tonight they have hit 10 of them. Amor's hit a couple of them right before one was oh. when the shot clock expired and one was the uh, when the third quarter was dying. She's hit some backbreakers. I mean, those are the tough ones. You know, you can... You want to yell at your team when they're giving them up in <laughs> transition or they're not stepping up on a switch, but some of the shots Amor has made, you're just like, what else can you do? And now Liz Kitley has another double-double with that rebound. Her 12th of the season, already leading the ACC in that category. But she's not on the Lisa Lesson list. Oh, he's a shepherd. And that prompts a timeout. So Virginia Tech, that three by Amor to end the third. And they come out firing in the fourth.
Coming up tomorrow morning, Trevor Lawrence's pro day from Clemson, where he gets to strut his stuff in front of scouts and executives. Reese Davis is there with Tim Hasselbeck, David Pollock, and the huddle's EJ Manuel Topic Shea also reporting live from the workout. The one-hour special begins at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. We go from Trevor Lawrence, outstanding, to Elizabeth Kitley, outstanding. Yeah, I mean, what an evening for Kitley. We knew she would have an advantage at 6'5 over this smaller interior of Miami, and there just hasn't been an answer. I mean, 8 for 14 from the field, the efficiency, so much so that Miami had to go zone where I'm sure they really didn't want to against the three-point shooting team. Well, Arjavitz left it short. She has not scored tonight. Getting the start for Miami for the second straight game. So Miami has now been outscored 10 nothing. Uh, let's raise that to 13. It's a 13-0 run that started with Amor's three that ended the third quarter. And this is the biggest lead of the night for the Hokies. Misha Shepard now with 19, nine points in the fourth quarter, and Miami finally ends the drought. Yeah, Harden, who has really been feeling it from the very beginning, even in stretches where Miami has struggled, Harden has kind of been that constant energy, that stroke of confidence when the Canes have needed it. Harden now with 16 points. Miami now down 20. Goni back in the game, number 14 in white. She's a freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. At 6'2". I've seen a lot of playing time tonight, even with Kitley out on the floor. You know, when you look at what's ahead for Virginia Tech and you talk about Elizabeth Kitley, you know, she did not play against Kunane as Goni gets the three to go there. She didn't play against Kunane because she was out for both games against NC State. That was a battle I was definitely looking forward to. Um, but she is about to play against Cardoso. And that's where I'm more interested to see how Kitley does against some of the bigs in the ACC that have the size and girth to really deal with her. Um, didn't have her best night against Georgia Tech. And as you know, they have a, a big front line with Hermosa and Kubai. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how she plays against Cardoso. Yeah, that will be interesting. Unfortunately for Virginia Tech, they're not scheduled to play until a week from Sunday against Syracuse. Again, their game this Sunday against BC called off because the Eagles are in COVID protocol and their, their scheduled game after that was against Duke who called off their season around Christmas time. So uh, I don't know if you want to have a, a 10 day layoff when you look like you're going to go in red, red hot on a four game win streak. Well, no one wants to have a 10 day layoff at all, but you're right, Pam, as Baines gets it to go, we'll go to the free throw line. But every coach in this league, just about every coach in the country has had to deal with that. You know, you and I just did a game in the Big Ten last week and Indiana had a couple of stretches where they were out for 10 days, out for 11 days. And the good thing is they're not, they can still practice. You know, when teams are on COVID break, they can't even practice. So there's some that have had those stretches where they've just been in their rooms or in isolation. So I think it's been tough, I'm sure, to keep any kind of momentum going, but to also get the chemistry of your team to where you right. want it to be. It's a hell ball. Goes over to Miami. Yeah, and Indiana was a team. On, they had an 11 day and a 13 day break, but and those breaks were because their opponents were in protocol. So right. yeah, it's just been that kind of that kind of year. Yeah, so they could still practice, and not that it's easier. I mean, coaches have told us it's hard to be in practice and think you're preparing for one team, and then you find out you're not going to play them. But I think it is at least a little better when your your players can get into the gym during those down times if it's not your team that has a COVID issue. Well, Kitley that time got picked by Harden, who's really had a good game, but then you get the whistle. And you, you talk about this, the, the breaks between games. Oh, this was not a pick, Pam. This was a block, a block. full out block Pardon. on Kitley. Kitley wow. got Kitley. Harden got up. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice job by Harden, who is I just a, had to uh, clean that up. Thank you. He's about five inches <laughs> shorter. I know. That was a, that was enjoyable for uh, for Destiny Harden, and then Miami converts on the uh, other end. So Destiny Harden, one of the bright spots for Miami, but down 17, and they're entering a stretch where they're going to play four games in eight days, starting with today's game. Man, that's that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's very tough. And, you know, as we told you earlier, City Baba's unavailable tonight. So, you know, everyone moves up a little bit more in rotation, but it's been a lot of minutes for the main teams. But take a look at these net rankings in the remaining schedule for Miami. There's some opportunity here where they're going to play teams, four out of the five teams that we saw in that slab. Charlie Cream said is in the NCAA tournament. So Miami's got a chance to move their numbers up if they can pick up some wins in this stretch. But to your point, it's a brutal schedule, Pam. Virginia Tech, 33 in the net rankings, which has replaced the RPI as far as the committee deciding who should get into the tournament as at larges. Boy, Harden now has 20. That ties a career high. She had 20 against North Carolina earlier this year. The only two 20-point games in her collegiate career. And they just lost Baines underneath. Yeah, just no communication. But you know, Harden scored double figures in four of her first five games. It has not scored in double figures since then. So she is... It's been a long time coming for her. She did have yeah. a big rebounding game against Florida State, as you pointed out earlier, Pam, but... Uh, this is much needed, and hopefully will make them a little more well-rounded well in their scoring with Harden kind of getting back into the, into the flow. Saturday, basketball coming your way. Men's basketball at 2 Eastern time. We'll take you up to Syracuse at the Carrier Dome where Boston College is in town to take on the Orange right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And we remind you to coming up at the top of the hour, we have the Syracuse women getting ready to take on Florida State. So just uh, stay right here. Lots of basketball coming your way. It'd be a fun one. You know, I think Florida State has still got a tremendous upside. I know you feel like the season's winding down, but they're a team that probably had to make more changes than, than many ACC teams coming into this year losing three major pieces on their on their team because they were seniors and graduating and so a, a total retooling no Sue Samurai who is taking the season off to care for her for her mother and I just look at that roster and there's so much potential in, in the in the pieces but they just haven't had a lot of time to really gel and, and sink get into that new identity and Florida State is one of the nine teams that Charlie Cream has going into the NCAA tournament. Nine teams more than any other conference. The SEC, he has eight going in. He has both Florida State and Virginia Tech projected as a 10 seed right now. Syracuse coming up as a seven seed. And Virginia Tech, remember folks, has not been to an NCAA tournament since 2006. Would have gone last year. They had a terrific year. Uh, won 21 games before the season was called off. So uh, it looks like they will have an opportunity to finally get into the NCAA tournament. And Notre Dame is one of the first four out where the ACC has kind of owned that bubble, haven't they? They have, but it, you got to look at it. It's been a wild few weeks. I mean, NC State lost to Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Louisville lost to NC State, another three for the Hokies. Um, Georgia Tech, which we mentioned, got beat by Wake Forest at home after winning seven straight. Syracuse has won four of their last five. Virginia Tech's won three in a row. Notre Dame has lost three in a row. North Carolina beat NC State. I mean, it has been crazy. And still uh, about two and a half weeks left in this regular season. The ACC tournament will go on in Greensboro. First week in March, and then you know, Selection Monday coming up. I mean, it's 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 been a blur. 
and this, yeah. the ch and the choppiness of the season. It's it's been it's been very interesting. It has, and you got to tip your hat to these coaches, to the administrators, to these players in particular for everything they've sacrificed. I mean, many of them, you know, we've talked about this. They're not having a normal student athlete experience this year. Um, you know, not able to really participate in, in things happening on campus and can't really be around anyone to try to protect the team um, with COVID protocols and, and health and safety. And they've been focused. They've gave, given us great basketball, but um, it's been trying, I think, on everyone. Um, I mean, just because it's, it's a very different time that we're living in. And um, you just have to give them all the respect. Yeah, it's been trying on all of them student athletes and Kenny Brooks talks about that that people have to realize these players aren't robots that there's just a lot going on and boy Virginia Tech though on the court Kayla King hit a three on her last trip down missed that one but boy Virginia Tech is sailing right now folks this is their fourth straight win they will have the 10 days off before they play Syracuse and four straight wins, by the way, will tie the ACC winning streak that they set just last season. Goni from the outside and from Miami. Boy, we, it, it, our open, we talked about the two bigs in Kitley and in Bondu. Elizabeth Kitley with 19 points, 11 rebounds, and Bondu really struggling as uh, Naomi right now only has six points and three boards on a tough matchup with Kitley, which we anticipated coming in. Yeah, I mean, you got to tip your hat to this Virginia Tech team. They are a threat. They have a confidence now on the offensive end of the basketball that really you don't see many teams across the country with the kind of balance that they have, having a dominant player on the perimeter as well as one on the inside. And so Kenny Brooks said he had to throw out his playbook and do some things different. They're running some different plays right now than they were to, to start the season in order to get Kitley out of some of those doubles and to get things moving. And they've had roster changes and injuries, <laughs> but this is a Hokie squad that's dangerous, Pam. Yes, indeed. Kenny Brooks' team goes to 11-7 and seven on the season. Miami next plays at Florida State, the team they just beat a few days ago. They go back and play them as they go on this stretch again of uh, four games in eight days. But an impressive win for Virginia Tech. Kitley and Shepard combining for 38 on the night. Amor deserves a hug. She was terrific. The little Aussie hit five of her six threes. For LaChina Robinson, I'm Pam Ward. Thanks for watching. Coming up at the top of the hour at Syracuse and Florida State. More ACC basketball on the way.